Hey guys, thanks so much for getting through this full video. It's been really fun for me to get all my ideas when it comes to goal kicking. It's such a, such a passion of mine, obviously, when I was playing, getting all the different coaching information and working out what worked for me. I think that's the big key to it, is, is finding what works for you, trial and error. Stick with something for a certain amount of time. If things change, you can change and try out a different technique, a different kicking tee. Um, I've been through most of these experiences myself as a kicker. So, as I was saying, it's been great over the last three years of starting this Rugby Bricks project to get all the information together. I've, I've gone through these pillars, I've worked on them, I've gone through them with players and kickers and myself experimenting. Um, so it's been really good to put it all in one place. One thing we always get through Rugby Bricks, um, Facebook or Instagram or any, any platform is frequently asked questions. So the same questions keep coming up. So I wanna finish this video off by answering those questions and hopefully, hopefully you guys can take this information and use it in your own kicking game. So let's jump straight into the questions. So many kickers, especially when you're young, are in such a rush to add distance to their kicking technique. I myself was one of them. But your body is still growing, you're still developing, you still haven't got your full strength yet, so you can't be in too much of a rush to get there. Plus if you are, and all you're trying to do is get max distance, trying to kick the ball further than anyone else in your team, chances are your technique's probably go, gonna go off a little bit. So my best advice for how to get more distance is by really working on your technique, getting your timing better, getting your structure better, so that everything becomes more effortless. So it's not a, a max effort every time to try and kick the ball as far as you can. So eventually as time goes on, when you sort of get around sort of 18, 19, 20 years of age, you should now be getting to some really good power within your kicking. If you're still struggling, at the very start of this video, we talked about all those different body movements. So now all of a sudden we're gonna start using our body much better. I use that example of the weightlifter putting the power clean together, everything has to work well, and then the weight goes up really easily. But that weightlifter's had to work up to that weight, they haven't just jumped from zero to 100. So be patient with it, become obsessed with your technique and really good ball flight and really good ball strikes, and the distance will come. Last thing on this, there's a lot of kickers nowadays and playing super rugby, I know Richie Mwanga himself um, talks about not going after the big long range kicks anymore. They really focus on their technique and if their range is 45 meters, that's all they're worried about and that's where they're gonna kick from. Whenever I used to kick into a strong headwind, I changed up a few things. So if this was my ball, ball set up, I always used to try to have the ball sitting on around about a 45. I felt like at the start of my kicking career, I'd really try to flatten the ball out and really punch it. This, this changed my whole kicking technique because all of a sudden now my ball looks different, my contact's different. So what I would do, if 45's your usual, just dip the ball just slightly and all I focused on is winning that half meter So and probably winning it a little bit quicker than what I usually do. So just like what we talked about in the 10 pillars when it comes to momentum, if you think, right, I'm going into headwind, I'm really gonna stay in this kick, I'm gonna really punch through this half meter post ball and get through that quickly, and that means that my foot's probably gonna stay lower for longer and really dart that ball into the wind. So that's all you can really do into the wind. Um, if you've got a little bit of side angle, again, just commit to your line, have that long target. Um, but it is, it is a skill that you need to work on, so don't always go down to the end of the field with the wind. Have a crack going into the, into the wind and see how good you can get at it. Last thing on that, come up with a really rock solid plan. So when you're putting the ball on the tee, this is my plan, this is the wind I'm feeling, I'm gonna commit to this plan and generally good things happen. Whenever I have a kicking session with someone, it's always about them kicking the ball first before I try to enforce any ideas or cues or techniques. So I really need to see them take at least 20 kicks before I start offering feedback straight away. Um, I'm all about having an individual technique. The reason why I came up with the 10 pillars is it doesn't matter what technique you use, you can fit into the 10 pillars. So mindset, doesn't really matter what technique you've got. Ball set up, just tell me what your ball set up is. All the pillars have uh, really good detail in them and I guess what I try to get the kicker to understand is if I ask you about a single pillar and you can't answer me about what you do, you don't understand your kicking technique well enough. So your technique can be your technique, 
there's a lot of people that have done it before you that have had success, so why not try to learn from them and, and almost mimic them and see how, how they've gone about their kicking process. Have a lot of conversations, ask a lot of people, get a lot of feedback, uh, and eventually you'll get to something. When you do get to something really good, commit to it for sort of two months and maybe just block out a bit of noise, say, no, this is what I'm focusing on, um, and see how well you can get that. Yes, so when I was kicking, I used to kick off a really low tee, um, and I've got nothing against low, low kicking tees, but what I found for my kicking foot and my technique is I'd always get that one where I'd wrap the ball too much and get the ball to, to hook away. So that was the issue I was having, so therefore uh, my coach at the time, Tony Brown, he's now with the Highlanders Coaches Japan, he got me up to a new kicking tee around about the same height as the RV Vortex uh, mid-cut. So that just meant that the ball was a little bit higher for me, it was leaning forward, I could get my foot up the back. And instantly, the thing that it taught me is goal kicking shouldn't be as hard as your punt kicking. So um, if you're punting the ball down field, field really well and then you go to your tee kicking and you can hardly hit it, there's no reason for the tee to be just as hard as your punt kick. So um, hence why I went to that, tee a little bit higher, leaning the ball forward, I could hit this ball so much more consistently. consistently. Goal kicking became so much more enjoyable um, and I just really enjoyed. So I changed that up and I've tweaked things throughout my whole kick kicking uh, career. Not so much tweak technique things but just had really big focuses so one of the big things for me was a slow first step on my approach so um, that was just a real focus for sort of a month's time. I'm doing this every kick I take, my first step is slow no matter what. So this is something that all kickers have got to go through, playing on club fields or wet fields in the middle of winter. I know coming from the down south of, of New Zealand that we had some shocking fields come near the middle of the season. Um, what I used to do is just square my approach up a little bit so that my plant foot um, wasn't coming in on such an angle and wasn't, wasn't so much force going through my foot. Now yes, I did have to just to allow for that a little bit because now all of a sudden I wasn't getting through the ball normally, but if I was slipping over, I wouldn't even kick the ball anywhere. So that was the small adjustment I made just with my plant foot to get that set. Um, but I'm pretty sure everything else can stay the same. If it's not a kick that has got max distance or you're really trying to um, hit the ball well because distance is an issue, I think you can probably just rely on your timing a little bit more. So just dial back the force that's going through the ball, get a good plant foot and uh, you should be good in the mud. For me, I became really obsessed with goal kicking around the age of 20, so I used to go kicking on game day in the morning. Um, now this was all just to keep the rhythm because I wanted to, to feel really good in the afternoon when I was playing. As I sort of developed and started to get a little bit older, my last session before the game was actually in the warm-up. So. Uh, the warm-up kick is really crucial because this is when you can get a feel for what your body is doing on this day. So your body is not going to feel the same every day of the week, especially on game day if you're full of energy. And I used to love pre-game kicking because your body feels a million dollars, you've got so much energy, the crowd's starting to roll in, you just strike the ball so well. Um, so you need to figure out, okay, this is what I'm doing today. So it's all about warming up well, getting a feel for the ball, a few punt kicks, I always started with punt kicks to get a feel for the ball, strike the ball well, going back to that cue of hit the ball well, any style of kick that you're doing. Um, and then I'd really realistically only have about 10 games pre-kick, um, and mainly from just in front or just to the side of in front. I didn't worry about getting out into the woods because all I cared about was what did my technique feel like, how well I was kicking the ball, getting a good ball flight and getting good confidence going into the game. Good question, and a lot of people find it way easier kicking from the sideline. One, because there's less pressure, because people don't expect you to get those sideline kicks. The other thing is you've, got a, you've usually got spectators or people in the crowd right there with you, so for some reason that brings a lot more focus to the kick and you're really dialing on the ball because it feels safer to focus all your attention through the ball. And the more important, and probably the one that I think that it is, is because it's a long target. So quite often at training, everyone's mucking around, the forwards come over, the coaches have a kick from the sideline corner, um, and generally a lot of people get it. I think it's because the target's so far away, it gives you that long target automatically, so therefore you 
your focus on it, you really dial in and, and that's why you nail those long range kicks. So that's why having a long target is important even when you're right in front. Instead of just looking at this big open space of the post, have a long target, spot something through the post in the distance, 20, 30, 30 meters, and that's, where, that's your line of the target, just like the sideline kick. So if you're brand new to goal kicking, generally you've either played another sport or you've grown up kicking something. So if you've grown up kicking soccer, I'd recommend going off a low kicking tee because your foot strike's coming through relatively normal. If you're in Australia and you've played a lot of AFL and, and Aussie rules, your foot strike's much higher because you've been kicking out of hand, so I'd recommend something a little higher. From what we've seen with sales of the kicking tees, we've seen a lot more of the higher tee. I think you can get a slightly nicer ball strike on it, your foot's up the back of the ball, so it's slightly an easy place to start. If you've never kicked before, we've got to start with some of that body training because we've got to be able to tell our body what position we want to get it into. And the second part of it is find a kicker that you really like and you say, I want to look like him when, when I kick. So that's what I did growing up, that's what kids do when they see their superstars on the TV. I want to kick like that person, so I'm going to mimic them I'm going to do their approach and uh, it's a really good place to start when you're learning out just follow someone that you admire and, um, and, and trial and error work out what works for you. We've all had games where we've put the ball on the tee, we're standing at the back of the mark and we've got no idea where the ball's going. We haven't got the trust in our kicking technique, we haven't got the trust in our process, and we just haven't done enough kicking to be really confident on, on the field. So if you are having a lot of misses or you're at training session and things just aren't going well, I always go back to punting the ball. So I can generally, every day of the week, punt the ball really well. I can get the feel back. So kicking and goal kicking shouldn't be uh, should be just as easy as punting the ball out of the hand so getting nice strikes on the ball the feel of the ball if we hit the ball well generally it goes where, where we want it to go so you're having a shocker if you're in a game and you just you've got no trust in yourself um, I would hand the kicking duties to someone else if you're an experienced kicker and you want to stay in the fight stay in it and slow things down back your technique uh, you've done the work trust it I've had to do that in games before and you managed to get out of that hole um, but yeah best advice I can give is training session um, um, or if you can, get back to punting the ball. You can hit the ball really well and get the feel that you want through your foot. As you get through the grades, the balls will get better. Um, if you can get your hands on a nice quality ball, one that's got a, a good sweet spot and good grip so that you can work on your passing, that's great. It's not essential. All, every good kicker that you know has gone through their life, they've had a bag of balls that have got no grip on them, they're all rough, they've got different seams, they're different sizes. And I feel like it's a really good thing for you as a kicker to have to adjust to. So don't be in a rush to get the fancy gear, the fancy boots, the fancy balls. Those things will come. Put in the hours, which whatever you've got, whatever you can afford or whatever you can get your hands on through your club or through your school, whatever those balls are, just use those. Nice boots are always really nice to wear because they're comfort and they've got really good grip. And I've kind of changed my tune a little bit on this. I used to say it doesn't matter what pair of boots that you wear. Um, but I guess if you're feeling good, you're feeling balanced and you're, you're really happy with your boots because your plant foot gets in a great position, you feel balanced and you get nice strikes, um, the laces and the way the boots design feels really good. I think there's not many tools that a rugby player can buy when they play rugby. So your boots and your mouth guard are the only two things you've really got control over. So I think if you can um, get your hands on a nice pair of boots, it does make a difference. But if you haven't done any work on your technique, and we're only talking about 1% if that when it comes to a good pair of rugby boots, if you haven't got yourself to sort of that 98, 99% of a quality technique, it doesn't matter what you wear on your feet, you're not gonna be a good goal kicker. So put your time into your goal kicking. If you're a youngster, it doesn't matter about your boots, kicking bare feet, you can still work on your, your technique and develop that. Guys, thank you so much for watching this Rugby Bricks detail video when it comes to goal kicking. Again, it's my absolute passion. Uh, if you haven't already downloaded the workbook that comes with this detail episode, all the good stuff is in there. All the information that you need around the 10 pillars, body training, the gym exercises are in that document. Uh, good luck with your goal kicking process and uh, two big things when it comes to Rugby Bricks is outwork and outlearn.